This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South Today, bells ring out across Dunedin as people celebrate the return of the Royal Albatross to Tyro ahead. A birthday celebration is held for an Aratown teenager tragically killed last month. And Southlanders come together to discuss environmental concerns in their region. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Sophie Morris. Dunedin resounded with bells ringing out at 1pm yesterday to mark the return of the first Northern Royal Albatross. The birds have been nesting for over a hundred years at Tairoa Head, their only breeding colony on the mainland. Bells of all sorts of shapes and sizes rang out across Dunedin City yesterday in what is now an annual event marking the return of Northern Albatross to Tairoa Head. Amongst those welcoming the birds back were pupils from Broad Bay School, along with their principal, Greg McLeod. So does anyone know why are we ringing the bell at 1pm today? Uh, Who can yeah. tell me? Albatrosses. The albatrosses. Albatrosses. Albatross. Albatross. What's happening? Albatross. 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 Albatross are flying home to breathe so that they can have their families for generations to come. The first bird back actually arrived last Wednesday and was a female going by the name of Blue Lime White. Her, her tag's Blue Lime White. Um, she's female and nine years old. Um, she hasn't actually had chicks yet so hoping that she'll um, breed up at Tairo Head um, and which will be really cool. Last year the colony celebrated a hundred years since the first egg was laid in 1919. However, the first chick wasn't hatched until almost 20 years later, when school teacher Lance Richdale camped near the nest to stop people stealing the egg. Arthur Street school pupils, such as Esme Lisbeth Blacker, are aware of the historical significance of the colony. Well, Arthur Street's quite an old school, oldest in Otago, so I think it's pretty meaningful that so many albatross have come and gone since, which is pretty awesome. They leave every year, come in every year, which is pretty cool that we signify it, them coming in with the bell. And while the Northern Royal Albatross only has a toehold on the mainland, a large population of about 17,000 birds exists on the Chatham Islands. In Dunedin, the South today. One year on from a Dunedin fire that burnt 30 hectares of scrub and tussock on Dunedin's Flagstaff Hill, the vegetation is growing back. Last September's fire sparked a large-scale response from firefighters, aided by eight helicopters, and temporarily closed 14 walking tracks. Forest and bird members say the site is recovering as well as expected. Even in the weeks that followed the fire, tussock and flax re-sprouted and now a year on there's been reasonably good regeneration of tussock. However, there's still concern gorse and broom could take over large areas of flagstaff. A birthday barbecue and swim was held at Frankton yesterday, celebrating the birthday of an Aratown teenager who died tragically last month. Okotubu High School pupil Alana Walker was killed in a car crash in August. Friends and family of Arrowtown teenager Alana Walker, who was tragically killed in a car crash last month, celebrated her 18th birthday with a splash yesterday. So we're all gathered here just really to, to celebrate who she was and what she, what she was all about, and that was being crazy. Being Alana and doing anything that wasn't wasn't normal, she liked to be a little bit different. Yeah. That love of being different saw Alana become known for enjoying a dip in Lake Wakatipu. Her one love was to go out and swim. Doesn't matter what day, what time of the year it was, she just would jump in the lake. Her and her friends, whoever was around, and just have a great time. Get out and 
go and carry on with life. Zoe's attending the birthday barbecue in her memory included school friends and family, some travelling from across the South Island for the celebration. People have travelled from um, as far fairly and beyond just, just here to just be part of her memory and, and celebrate for her today. Alana Walker was a pupil at Wakatipu High School in Queenstown, the South today. A couple involved in an explosion at an Invercargill house which seriously injured two people have been charged with drug offences. Samuel Just and Rebecca Ann Bauer, both of Invercargill, appeared at the District Court today jointly charged with the production of cannabis oil. Police laid charges after an explosion at a property in Rothesay Place on the 9th of September. Three people were injured, two seriously, after a butane gas bottle exploded and a fire broke out. The pair will reappear mid next month. Saturday saw Southlanders with environmental concerns get together at this year's annual spring EcoFest. The event had everything from tree planting initiatives to a petition to help sea lions settle along the Catlins coast. Environmentally conscious people in Southland are working to make the region a whole lot greener. Saturday's spring EcoFest brought many of them together with the likes of Reforest Northern Southland. Our goal within the next couple of years is to replant the entire Lumsden stream because um, we've identified uh, you know, native species of fish in the stream that need protecting and also we want to uh, have a bit of a native corridor going up through uh, the Lumsden area. And hookers sea lions visiting the region look to benefit from a petition to keep cars off two specific beaches in the Catlins. They've been coming to mainland New Zealand for the, from the Subantarctic Islands for the last 20 years and we want them to feel safe on mainland New Zealand so their population increases. And restricting vehicles will make them feel safe. Organiser Jenny Campbell says she's pleased with how the event went, which included a map to help people find their nearest community garden. Drawing a map of Invercargill with all the placement of the community gardens and where people are gardening together to encourage local community. The Spring EcoFest was supported by Forest and Bird. And in Invercargill, the South Today. Still to come on the South Today, we hear the latest aviation news from Central Otago and an Oamaru man and well-known gardener celebrates his 100th birthday. All new episodes of Put Some Colour in Your Life are now screening on Channel 39. Take a look at Australian artists and the techniques they use in their studio. Put some colour in your life. Tuesdays, 7.30. Hi, our Campbell means where? We're back in George Street, on the corner of Hanover Street. Come and check out our big store. It's a big space, full of bargains. Now look at these shirts. There's shirts for everybody here. Look at these merino pullovers. Stacks of moleskins. Literally tons of trousers. Check out these big racks of sports jackets. Beautiful. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. So come and check out Alex Campbell menswear. We're back on George Street in the old ANZ building. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a MOLMAP. MOLMAP is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits.
You've seen us in the street, now find us online. Check out shopon.org.nz. We have all sorts of treasures, from retro and vintage clothing to antiques, homewares and accessories. New items added every week. We're open 24-7. Welcome back. Queenstown is set to be flooded with domestic tourists during the school holidays, with Air New Zealand announcing it's increasing its capacity to the resort to above pre-COVID levels. The airline announced this morning it was ramping up its domestic capacity for the holidays, which start on Saturday. Overall, the airline says its domestic schedule will be operating at nearly 85% of pre-COVID-19 levels. Face coverings or masks are still required on flights to or from Auckland. And staying with aviation in the Queenstown Lakes District, a group representing nearly 3,500 Upper Clutha residents are behind a judici judicial review in the Queenstown High Court. The group is opposed to the development of a second jet airport in Wanaka and say they represent nearly half of the adult population of the Lakeside Township. The group claims the Queenstown Lakes District Council's 100-year lease of the Wanaka Airport to the Queenstown Airport Corporation two years ago was unlawful. They say the consultation process was inadequate and negotiations were conducted in secret. The group is calling for the scrapping of the lease. The hearing is set to continue this week. Tom Garvitt says he doesn't know the secret to a long life but says keeping busy is an ideal way to keep going. The Omaru man and well-known gardener celebrated his 100th birthday at the weekend and has no plans to slow down now that he's reached a century. Omaru icon Tom Garbutt turned 100 recently. He's been well known across the lower South Island for his expertise in gardening, especially the growing of rhododendrons, and even had his own radio show dedicated to giving tips on gardening. I would have spoken to women's groups especially hundreds of times <laughs> yeah. from Christchurch to Invercargill. I read a lot of books from that and then eventually when we had Radio Waitaki here they asked me if I would take over a gardening program. So I said, yes, I would. So I used to go to the studio every Saturday morning for an hour and invite people to ring in with their problems. Yeah. And uh, so I was, I was doing that for 18 years. Jobs were hard to come by when he left school in the Depression years of the 1930s, but he was lucky to get a start working for a Dunedin gardening centre. The next thing there's a wee advertisement came up, wanted a boy to learn gardening, uh, apply to uh, Riley's uh, fruit and vegetable market in my place. We grew uh, daffodils, exhibition daffodils on a very large scale, uh, gladioli on a large scale, oh, and also we had huge rockeries there, and we would sell and look after these crocus and, and snowdrops and gentians, all sorts of things that grew in rockeries that you don't see nowadays, of course. Garbutt still drives a car and says the secret to remaining in such amazing good health is keeping busy. In Oamaru, the South Today. After the break on the South Today, pirates take to the slopes in Queenstown and we check out tomorrow's weather.
all new episodes of Put Some Colour in Your Life are now screening on Channel 39. Take a look at Australian artists and the techniques they use in their studio. Put Some Colour in Your Life, Tuesdays, 7.30. And every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Step into Shop on Carol and discover a shop full of treasures. We have a fantastic range of vintage and retro clothes, upmarket clothing labels, collectible items, beautiful jewellery, quality linen and the best range of vintage haberdashery. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. We're back in George Street, on the corner of Hanover Street. Come and check out our big store. It's a big space, full of bargains. Now look at these shirts. There's shirts for everybody here. Look at these merino pullovers. Stacks of moleskins. Literally tons of trousers. Check out these big racks of sports jackets. Beautiful. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. So come and check out Alex Campbell menswear. We're back on George Street in the old ANZ building. Ah, TV, our favourite babysitter. But it can be tough keeping up with what our tamariki are watching. Uh, luckily, the Broadcasting Standards Authority has made some smart changes to the classification labels. Ooh! Plus changes to the time of day certain rated shows will air and awesome new parental lock features, meaning your babysitter's job is safe. Find out more at safeviewing.co.nz Welcome back. Cardboard pirate ships took to the slopes in the annual Pirate Day at the remarkable ski field on Saturday. The competitors were mostly ski field staff taking a few minutes out of their busy jobs to raise money for a good cause. Pirates ruled the snow fields, albeit briefly, at Queenstown's remarkable ski field on Saturday. Near the end of each season, staff find a brief window of opportunity to hastily build their not-so-sturdy cardboard ships for the annual Pirate Day run. We supply tape for them. They grab their cardboard wherever they can find it. Some of them go all the way into town. I heard a team went to speak to the manager from the warehouse to get some cardboard. And then it started last night, but all the ship got finished this morning, first thing. The winner is chosen on categories including speed, design and general pirateness, with this year's first place going to the road team. Uh, how long did it take you to build your, uh, your ship? Oh, it took us a couple, of, a couple of days, lad. We're quick on the hammer and faster on the seven seas. And what was the trick to winning? The trick to winning was to have faith in yourself and faith in your team. Final word? Final words? Squids and rum! Happy days, thank you! As well as providing staff with a quick break off work, the event raises money for the Remarkables Adaptive Programme, which helps people with disabilities to fully enjoy Queenstown's winter experience. It's always good to see the effort that the staff put. They only have a few minutes to do that. Uh, they gather, they take break to go build their ship and all of that. 
They're all going back to work right away now, so yes, yeah, great event. Ten teams entered this year, with one crewed by people from outside the ski field. In Queenstown, the South today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. Bells rang out across Dunedin as people celebrated the return of the Royal Albatross to Tyro ahead. The birthday celebration was held for an Aeroton teenager tragically killed last month. And Southlanders came together to discuss environmental concerns in their region. And time now for a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome, Hayden. Good evening, Sophie. How Good are you? Good evening. Very well. Yourself? Good. Great, actually. It's great to be the night editor on a night when there's news, news, news happening. It's one of those days, really. It's very busy. Tonight, obviously, is the first big debate. So Judith Collins, Jacinda Ardern going head-to-head -head live on television. And mm. our Mike Houlihan, our political writer, will be watching intently. Uh, gauging the mood and gauging the performance of the respective leaders and, and hopefully declaring a winner. So that'll be very interesting tomorrow. Not only how the debate goes, but I guess Mike's, uh, Mike's take on that mm. as well. And simultaneously in Queenstown, there's a big event tonight. So the respective parties' uh, financial spokespeople are having a debate. So um, all the big guns talking finance and money, which is a huge part of this election, are in Queenstown. So we'll have one of our reporters there tonight also seeing what is said and how the people react to that. So we're starting to get close to that election, finally. Yes. Yeah. On a lighter note, dinosaurs, who doesn't love dinosaurs? They've, they've started arriving at the Otago Museum for this blockbuster show and exhibition. Uh, we've had a, a wee sneak peek today. There'll be a, a photo, I think, of one of, one of the dinosaurs. Uh, and another photo that's going to create a lot of interest tomorrow, you'll see on, I think, page one, is uh, sort of the long and the short of the Dunedin legal system. Uh, a lawyer who's 2.05 metres tall and a police prosecutor who's 1.65 metres tall. It's a, it's a cracking photo. Uh, COVID-19, there's all sorts of different angles still flying, so Queenstown's getting ready for a massive influx of people, mostly from Auckland, of course. Now there's some even more restrictions have been uh, removed. Um, school holidays just around mm. the corner. Business is getting very excited. Uh, Southern DHB saying they're ready, they're ready for spot COVID testing, they're ready for all those sorts of things. So right. that could be interesting. And people, some people out in the Otago Peninsula are concerned at a proposal to drop speed limits. They feel there's uh, safety measures have been done to roads already. There's no call to drop, drop speed limits. So we've got some reaction on that. And an interesting feature on the medical school saga. So we've had a couple of weeks now of drama around the medical school mirror on society, the pathways around selection. So Grant Miller, our reporter, has been delving into the issue, talking to all sides and really presenting all of the angles and all of the information out there for people to read and, and make up their mind on, I suppose. So it's a big paper tomorrow. There's plenty right. of good news right throughout. Wonderful. Thank you, Hayden. And time now for a look at what's happening in the weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by MOLMAP. Looking at the situation, a weakening trough of low pressure will decay over New Zealand tomorrow, but airflow will tend northwesterly again on Thursday and Friday, ahead of a much more active trough and series of fronts due at the weekend with gales. Starting off at the northwest of the South Island, Greymouth can expect thunderstorms and 16 degrees, while Westport can expect rain and 15. Across to the northeast, Blenheim is set for cloud and 19 degrees, while Nelson can expect rain and 17 degrees. In Canterbury, Sunshine for the region with 20 degrees in Kaikoura, 22 in Christchurch and 21 in Ashburton. To the southern towns, Alclutha, the Catlins, Gore and Lumsden are all set for fresh westerlies, some cloud and 15 degrees. In central, Moderate northwesterlies and fine conditions with 16 degrees in Queenstown, 15 in Wanaka and 19 in Alexandra. Tano can expect fresh westerlies, showers and 14 degrees.
to the northern towns on the coast. Variable winds and some cloud with 22 degrees in Oamaru and 25 in Timaru. Further inland, Omarama and Twizel can both expect moderate northwesterlies, fine conditions and 20 degrees. In Dunedin, a few showers tonight with an overnight low of 11. Sunny periods at first tomorrow with warm temperatures and moderate northerlies. Colder southwesterlies freshening during the afternoon with a few scattered showers. A high of 19 and a low of 6. Thick high cloud on Thursday with a few spots of rain at times. Light winds tending northerly. A high of 18 and a low of 9. And in Invercargill, rain easing tonight with northwesterly gales decreasing and an overnight low of 10. Mostly cloudy with a few scattered showers tomorrow and fresh gusty westerly winds with cooler temperatures. A high of 14 and a low of 9. Cloud increasing and rain developing on Thursday with northwesterlies becoming strong again. A high of 15 and a low of 10. That's all for our news this Tuesday. For the latest news from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz or follow Channel 39 on Facebook and YouTube. Thanks for joining us. Ka kite anō. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.